Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about process control, um, namely on-off control and PID. And as you, as you can see up here on my screen, we have um, a PID algorithm. That you see, you have your set point, you have the amount of error, you have proportional, integral, and derivative, and then it goes into calculating what your error is going to be and control the output. Then that get, again, that gets fed back in as error and it starts all over again. Now, that can look really complicated. So what I'm going to do is break this down into an analogy of a car. But before we do that, let's take a look at um, our basic control in process control, which is on-off control. So an on-off control, if the, uh, we'll say it, we're heating a temperature of your house and the furnace will come on, at a set point, which is this metal part here, and it will um, turn off when it's below the set point. So if we heat the house, we heat it up, but when we get to the temperature, we shut it off, but it, there's this overshoot that happens. That overshoot happens, then it comes back down again, it gets below the set point, it turns back on, but we still have that uh, mass to control, it still will dip down before it starts heating up again. And then when it heats up again, we get past the set point, and then it turns off again and then we get this cyclic action of on off. This is similar to if we were to look at a car and it's on off is like driving in a car to a stop sign and as soon as you get to the line you slam on the brakes. When you slam on the brakes you will skid past that stop sign. So let's take a look at our little car here and it zooms past. As soon as it hits the stop sign it slams on the brakes it zooms past. When it notices that you're past the stop sign, you slam it into reverse, you hit the full throttle, you go back, as soon as you hit the stop sign, you slam it on, and again you skid back. So that's the same kind of effect. Now when heating your house, it's no big deal, because one or two degrees is not an issue. However, when you're in an industrial application, one or two degrees can be a difference. So that's why we have PID. And by the way, with this on-off control, we could actually uh, take a look and put in uh, hysteresis here and what the history or uh, a dead sorry not hysteresis but a dead zone or dead band and a dead band just basically says when you come into uh, near the stop sign you don't, you don't control it on or off this way it'll it'll try to mimic or reduce the amount of overshoot that you see so if we look at PID and how it breaks down first of all proportional and when we look at proportional this is the amount or proportional to the error as we get to the stop sign. We'll apply brakes more and more. That's all proportional really is. And remember that PID is all based on time. So it's the time, um, which is usually called the control period, that the brakes will be on as we approach the stop sign. You can see that as we go past the stop sign or our set point, the amount the brakes are on are more and more. So with proportional, you can see that we get okay control. However, in pure essence, when we do this and say we have a car and we're driving along the, the roadway and we use strictly proportional, what we'll find is that we will never hit the set point. It'll always be below. So in order to get it to the set point all the time, we need to use reset or uh, integration. This is the I in PID. And really what it is, if we look at our car analogy, is the ability to track um, along the set point. So basically, if we were to ride in our car, we'd be in a ditch all the time if we just had portional control. So we throw in I control and it gets us back in and then we can follow along the dash line, which is our set point. The last one um, to come into play is differential. And a differential is what happens when we have other disturbances. So we're driving along in our car and we hit a hill. We climb up the hill, we go down the hill. Now, like I said before, PID is based on time. So with differential, it doesn't really, um, this allows us to deal with external disturbances. 
And what it will do is using D, it actually comes up here and uses the D function and controls the D function as we go down here so that it adjusts overall. So that in a nutshell is what PID is. And if we go back to our original diagram, we can go through all the math and which is really great. However, that's basically what you're looking at. So when we look at controlling or trying to tune something in the industrial environment, look at the, the way the analogy works and um, determine what of the PID that we need to control. Now there are some excellent references on the web. Um, one of them being the PID without a PhD. It basically goes through the PID parameters and, and tuning and how to do it. It's an excellent paper. It's about six pages long. And if you go to our website or just look up here, here's the actual link. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.